The big day has finally arrived. Marlowe, Cardano's low-code smart contract language, has finally hit mainnet, and now anyone can build on Cardano. Ready? Let's go. Today, we are going to discuss the long-awaited arrival of the Marlowe domain-specific language on mainnet, Cardano projects doing big things these days, the CCP with a Web3 white paper, and more of the Cardano Foundation poll redelegation phase. If you're offended by this guy's two drinks and a jacket at the pool workspace, or if you're finding value in these videos each weekday, please consider delegating to the Army of Spies stake pool, ticker AOS. Oh man, I have been waiting a long time for what we're about to talk about. This is my GitHub. So you can see about five years ago, I started trying to code the Army of Spies project in Plutus. And you could see I didn't make that many attempts, but I made some attempts. And at a certain point three years ago, I switched over to Marlowe. Why? Because I'm terrible at Haskell <laughs> because I am a rank amateur in Haskell. I am the world's worst beginner in Haskell. However, Marlowe, Marlowe is not like Haskell. Haskell has, Haskell has quite the learning curve. Marlowe is not like that. And you can see I made many, many, many more attempts in Marlowe. And this actually underestimates how much, how many attempts I made, because a lot of these are just one file I kept going back and updating over and over and over again. That's also true of the Plutus attempts. But believe me, the Marlowe attempts are much, 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 much better than the Plutus attempts. And that's because Marlowe is so, so friendly. This is a really big thing. Marlowe hit mainnet today in Cardano. We've been waiting a long time. You could see, I was trying to code the AOS project in Marlowe three years ago. This is the same project that I put in Catalyst Fund 3. And as I've said many times, I am relieved and very happy we didn't get funded because I don't think we really would have been able to build out the Army of Spies project back in Catalyst Fund 3. The, the ecosystem just wasn't mature enough. That The tooling wasn't there and... It was just not the right time, but I'm very excited to see to see Marlow hit mainnet now. Not necessarily because of this project. I still want to build this project out one day, but I'm more excited because of all the other projects that will get built under Marlow. There's always been this bottleneck. The bottleneck has been there weren't enough developers in the world to develop all of the ideas. And let's not exaggerate here. A lot of the ideas are bad, but. When you have a huge number of ideas being brought to fruition, you're going to have a whole lot more of those really good ideas that actually matter. You're going to have to build a lot of bad ones too. That's certainly the case. But if you if you start with a huge group of ideas that actually reach execution, you're going to have more of those great ideas, those one out of a hundred ideas that actually matter. And before we always had this huge bottleneck, not only were there not enough developers in the world to bring all the ideas to fruition, but there definitely were not enough Plutus developers because there weren't enough Haskell developers. We had this gigantic, even even more narrow bottleneck in Cardano than in, in you know almost any other blockchain because of the lack of developers that were available to develop in Plutus. Now we go from that environment, and we have a lot of other great projects like Aiken and 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 all Pluts and all Option, all these other projects that are trying to develop different programming language options for development of Cardano smart contracts. But all along in our back pocket, we've we've had the Marlowe concept. We've known that Marlowe was eventually going to come to mainnet, and Marlowe makes smart contract development in Cardano accessible to anyone. Anyone could start from nothing and learn how to make smart contracts in Cardano, could learn how to build on Cardano using Marlowe. Let me show you. So here we are at the Marlowe playground and right off the bat, you can tell that something magical is going on. You can code in four different ways in the Marlowe playground. 
you can avail yourself of Cardano's new low-code, almost no-code solution in Blockly. We'll look at that in just a second. Or you could code directly in Marlow, the Marlow domain-specific language. Blockly is going to convert into Marlow, or you could just code directly in Marlow, and Marlow is very human-readable. Or you could go the old-fashioned route and code in Haskell. Or you could code in JavaScript. And let me remind you, JavaScript is a monster language with way more developers than Haskell. So if you've got JavaScript skills, you could code in Marlowe, in the Marlowe Playground, in JavaScript, and that'll run in the simulator. And you can take a look at what your how your smart contract would behave without even having to deploy it on the blockchain. So what exactly do Marlowe and Blockly look like? This is Blockly, and this is one of the example contracts in Blockly. And you can see it's exactly as promised. You literally drag and drop separate subcomponents. You can see that contract block. It just sort of opens up and accepts this when block. And then the when block has subcomponents. And those subcomponents have subcomponents, which have other subcomponents. It's all very modular. Uh, you can very easily learn what these different blocks do. Um, even myself, even as as little development skill as I have, basically zero. Let's say I have no development skills, which is pretty much true. Even myself, I was able to figure out what these different blocks do and figure out and understand enough at least to put together the smart contract that could have at least served as the prototype for the Army of Spies project, enough that I was able to put it into directly into the proposal for our Army of Spies Catalyst proposal. So if, if I can figure this out, I think almost anybody out there could figure this out. I mean, this is pretty straightforward stuff. Here you've got a deposit. Who's the deposit by? The buyer. What is the amount? This amount. What is the currency? ADA. Where is it going? Into the account of seller. This is pretty pretty simple stuff and then you can see there's some when conditions it's like when this deposit happens uh when the choice is made uh that everything is all right and that choice is owned by the buyer and the choice bounds are you know certain numerical values uh then then the contract continues to close this is all pretty easy if uh if if you have the wherewithal to figure out what these different blocks do, which is not mission impossible, and you actually want to code a smart contract, I'm very convinced you could start from almost zero and figure out how to code a smart contract in Marlowe. And all kinds of resources, I'm sure, will roll out as to you know best practices with Marlowe, how to learn how to use Marlowe. Um, IOG has already had the Marlowe, I think they've had a cadre or two, a cohort of, or two of the Marlowe pioneers. So there's already going to be information out there for you about how to use Marlowe. But I think this is a really big turning point in our blockchain because we've had, like I described, we've had this big bottleneck, Haskell development, gigantic bottleneck. And now that's basically gone. If you want to develop a smart contract in Cardano, if you want to build on the Cardano blockchain, you can now, and it's as simple as dragging these blocks around. So what is what is what what do these blocks look like when they're in actual Marlowe code? So they look like this. This is Marlowe code. You can see there's a bunch of parentheses and brackets and stuff, you know, and uh, just like the blocks, there's some words you've got to figure out, <laughs> like pay, what does pay mean? <laughs> And if you hover on those words, you know, you'll, it'll give you a little bit of information, but it's pretty human readable. If you, you know, just sort of, you know, think of the parentheticals and the brackets, you know, as sort of dividing up, you know, different, uh, different items that you previously see as blocks, it's pretty easy to understand what's going on here. So why am I not showing you the army of spies contract? Well, here's the army of spies contract. And it goes clear over here, a lot of indentation going on, then it comes clear back over here. The problem is, as you would hope, they've made a bunch of changes to Marlowe since 2020. The last time I worked on this contract was in 2020. And they've made a bunch of changes to Marlowe. So they've been doing a bunch of work. They've improved it. They've updated it since 2020. They've done three years of work. So a lot of this code from the last time I worked on this contract no longer works. And in fact, I plugged this into GPT-4 and GPT-4 told me 
at least four different things that it, it thinks have uh, changed since this 2020 version of Marlowe that I have to update in this contract. I'll probably do that just to see if it runs again, because in the uh, old version, the 2020 version of Marlowe, this seemed to run in the simulator and do just fine. But like I said, it looks like they've been doing a lot of work on Marlowe because this contract no longer runs. I can't view it as blocks, can't set it to the simulator, just as you'd hope. I'd be a little worried if everything was exactly the same from 2020. Not the case. Looks like they've done a legit three years of work on Marlowe. So if you've always had a dream of building something on Cardano, but you didn't possess the development skills, it looks like your era started today. And you can begin that process with just a few little drag and drops in Marlowe. Speaking of projects in Cardano and building things, Cardano Crocs Club had this announcement today. USDC4 Exchange will provide the ability to withdraw any cryptocurrency to any bank account that supports SWIFT transfers. Trade any crypto to bank account. I have no idea how well this works, if anybody's actually using it yet, if it's live. I don't know any of the details. But if this is true, this seems pretty huge. And the reactions of people down in the comments seemed pretty consistent with mine. This is incredible. This is huge. That's pretty huge. And I agree. This is the kind of utility we've always kind of wanted with Cardano projects. The fiat off ramp, which is very useful for anybody who interacts with both the crypto world and the real world. I think <laughs> the vast, vast majority of us, even in crypto, even in Cardano, are still interacting with the real world. I think very few of us are like buying groceries and paying rent in ADA. I hope those days come. I hope those days come when I can do both those things in ADA all the time. But as of yet, I kind of still need to uh, to use the old fiat. So it's great to see projects like Cardano Crocs Club thinking about fiat off-ramping like this. And if this works, I have to agree, this seems like it might be pretty huge. It looks like if you're into both the Chinese Communist Party and Web3, today was also your day. The CCP dropped their Web3 white paper, which is 98 pages long. This poster sums it up with this. China to fully develop Web3 tech with a whole of government approach on their own terms. Of course, it's the CCP. Concepts like NFTs and metaverse are to be embraced and discussed. I like CZ's take on this, though. He says, interesting timing on this Web 3.0 white paper from the Beijing government tech committee with the June 1st anticipation in Hong Kong. We've been following those, uh, those developments on this channel. It looks like the whole of China is back in the embrace crypto mode. Now we're calling it Web3. You know, they're kind of just following the VC trend there, Web3.0. So they're kind of embracing that and they're running with that. But it it kind of matches this historical vacillation. You know, it's like one, one six-month period, the CCP hates crypto or they pretend like they hate crypto. In the next six-month period, it's like, let's go crypto. Let's go crazy with crypto. It looks like we're back in that pro-crypto phase. And that's only confirmed with this new white paper on Web3. What will they actually do with you know, Web3, whatever they decide that means to them. Uh, maybe this is a hint. I guess at the very start of this white paper, they immediately start alluding to the idea that um, the term metaverse was not in fact coined by Neil Stevenson in 1992's Snow Crash, but instead by a Chinese scholar. <laughs> it was not Neil Stevenson. Apparently he has stolen that term according to CCP. Maybe, maybe. I I obviously haven't read this in Chinese, so I don't know, but it's not, I'm it wouldn't surprise me if they're if they're kind of, you know, slightly implying maybe Neil Stevenson just stole this terminology from a Chinese scholar. <laughs> Seems like that's how the CCP likes to do it. Not only are they embracing metaverse, but metaverse was their invention all along. Finally, the Cardano Foundation wants to remind you that we are still in the redelegation phase of the poll. They say, calling all stake delegators, we're in the redelegation phase of the SPO on-chain poll experiment. Here's what they think you should do. You should go and view those dashboards. Those are these links right here, cardanoscan.io slash SPO dash polls, adastat.net slash polls. Go to one of those two dashboards, view the dashboards, see how your stake pool operator voted. 
examine the results, decide whether or not to redelegate your stake to another stake pool. So I think we can say with some level of certainty that some of these pools, a lot of pools have voted and some of these pools have voted in favor of their own checkbooks, in favor of their own pocketbooks, instead of in favor of decentralization. You might have a different definition of decentralization, or you might have a different different viewpoint about what parameters would lead more to decentralization. I've made my own feelings very clear, but whatever your feelings are about decentralization, if you believe in decentralization and you don't believe that your SPO, your stake pool, is voting in favor of decentralization, if they're instead voting in favor of their own pocketbook, you should redelegate. It's going to make a difference. Go ahead and redelegate to a pool that you believe is voting in favor of decentralization. I hope you're having a great week and I'll talk to you tomorrow.